Teachers, what was the worst thing a substitute teacher did while you were gone? Story one. Went to sleep for 1.5 hours. My class was freaking amazing. The sweetest, most thoughtful group I've ever had. When I got back the next day, I asked how the sub was. Me, how was the sub? Them, uh, he was fine. He kind of took a nap for a while. Me, what? What did you guys do? Them, worked quietly so that we wouldn't wake him up. Eventually, we ran out of work, so we just had silent reading. Me, for how long? Them, from when we started working until it was time to go outside. Me, that's a really long time. Look, I'm glad that you guys were so thoughtful. But if something like that ever happens again, please wake the sub up. It's not safe for the sub to sleep. He needed to be awake in case something happened. Them, we would have woken him up if we really needed to. But we also figured he probably really needed the sleep. Seriously, the sweetest class ever. Story two. The first year I taught fifth grade, I really wanted to do something special for my students before Christmas vacation. I spoke with my team and we came up with the idea to make every student a personalized Christmas ornament. We were going to surprise them by displaying the ornaments on a Christmas tree the day before vacation, and they would be able to take them home. I was gone for a department thing the day before we were going to set up the tree, and one of the least liked subs was scheduled for my class. Since I had stored all the ornaments in my closet, I simply asked if the students needed any supplies, make sure to get them yourself, and not let them see the surprise. The thing about this sub, and the reason she wasn't liked, was that her first line of defense was always threatened to take away something from for misbehaving. Recess, free time, lunch, etc. I think you know where I'm going with this. Fast forward to the end of the day, I get back to my classroom in the last 30 minutes of class so I could dismiss them when all of a sudden I met with 25 kids asking about their ornaments. I tried to play dumb and ask them what they were talking about and of course they informed me the sub said something. She told the students about the ornaments and said if they misbehaved, she would tell me and I would take away their ornaments. Instantly, I was filled with horror that the surprise was ruined for all fifth grade. Their kids, they told the whole grade during recess. Anger, because that oh no sub ruined the surprise. Sand disappointment, because I really wanted to see their faces when they walked through the door the next day and saw a special Christmas tree with their personalized ornament. It's not the biggest deal or anything, but I was really upset that weekend. To this day, when I talk to my old partners, I still refer to her as the Grinch. Story three. Back in year two, I had super bad growing pains. Like couldn't walk, move, nothing, and needed a wheelchair bad. My school was gearing up for sports day, so they had year levels. Take, it turns walking the oval to win points for their house. One lap equal sign one point. My teacher was lovely and either let me sit out or let the older kids push me so I could still win points and get some sun in winter. Well, my teacher was away for a week, I think. And we had this sub come in, and it happened to be the day it was my class's turn to walk the oval for an hour. So I'd put all my things down, walked over to my wheelchair at the back of the room, and sat down so my friend could wheel me. And boy, she didn't like that. She demanded I get out and stop playing in it because it wasn't a toy. I knew that, said that, and tried explaining, as a shy eight-year-old with a stutter, how I had crippling growing pains. She wasn't having any of it, and grabbed me by my arm and threw me out of it and told me to get up. It felt like every one of my bones broke. The walk to the Oval was horrible. She wouldn't let my friends help me walk. She screamed at me if I fell behind and tell me I'm holding everyone up. I was crying and I lost my lunch break because I was putting on a show. She made me walk the Oval after pleading not to. All my joints were swelling and pulsing to the point I felt sick. I got halfway around the Oval. Our Oval was around the 1.5 kilometers mark around and I passed out. Lucky we were Oval walking with the year 7S. One of the footy boys ran half the length of the Oval to come help and he carried me down. The sub was yelling at him to put me down because I was just doing it for attention. And the king he was with, a now screaming eight-year-old in his arms, just walked past her and told her to go fudge herself. He took me back to the classroom and used the class phone to ask the office lady to call my mum to pick me up. By that time, the sub had reached the class and the year seven boy had put pillows on the ground and set up a spot for me to lay down till mum came to get me and the moment he left, she'd just fly off the handles. I was made to stand in the corner of the classroom, Blair Witch style, for the rest of the day as punishment. My legs were trembling. I was crying, and each time she heard me cry, it was another day added. And she would make sure my teacher knew so she could continue the punishment. Psycho much? Mom showed up just before lunch, so I'd been standing there for about 45 minutes, and when I saw Mom, I just collapsed and Mom went off. My mom is bad, and boy did that teacher cry. The sub called for the principal's help, and apparently he could hear my mom yelling for him to come down, so bad person he R.A. and a ha. The whole class backed me up and told him what she had done to me, and she ended up being fired. That hour and 45 minutes, I had her as a sub because so many issues over the next three years with my joints and ended up not being able to walk for about a month. Apparently, that wasn't the first complaint, and she wasn't allowed to sub or teach again. Story 4. 
Not a teacher, but I know this was a disaster for my teacher. We had been studying Romeo and Juliet and West Side Story, and our teacher had created a very comprehensive exam where we would be asked to compare and contrast characters, situations, and themes of the two as answers to some very specific questions. He had spent countless hours ensuring that it was fair and complete. We were going to have the exam the following Monday, and he was taking Friday off. So he told us that in addition to the weekend, we should also use Friday's class to prepare for the exam. His instructions to the substitute were likely something like, tell them to prepare for the exam. They already know what to do. She marched in and shouted, prepare for an exam, and proceeded to hand it out. Of course, we protested, but what substitute hasn't heard? We're not supposed to get the exam today from a class at one time or another. When Monday came, the teacher was devastated. He could not count the scores. He wouldn't even attempt to grade it. He did not feel right giving the exam now that we had seen it. All the work he put into it and all the insight he suspected he might gain from scoring it were lost. Instead, we spent the day reviewing what we could have, should have, would have answered. As you can tell, I could really feel his pain. Story 5. Not a teacher, but I vividly remember one incident of having a substitute in kindergarten. I had an infected cut on my toe and had been prescribed an antibiotic that morning was the first time I took it. We were sitting on the floor for roll call, and I remember this burning pain in my abdomen, and she told us to get up and go to out desks. I tried to get up only to realize I couldn't move and just laid back. This sub was a total cow, and I remember she was always really mean anyway. She starts yelling at me for being attention-seeking and basically tries to pull me up. I'm in so much pain I start screaming, and one of the teachers from the classroom next to ours comes, realizes I'm not faking it, and calls an ambulance. Long story short, I'm horribly allergic to penicillin, and my kidneys were failing. I was in hospital for almost a week before I got discharged. Needless to say, that absolute bad person was not allowed back at the school, but I will never forget that day. Story six. Not a teacher, but in ninth grade, my algebra I teacher had her baby early in the year, so she was gone till the last month or two months of the school year. The sub was a former teacher, so you'd think she'd be a great sub. Nope. She hyper-focused on three, four out of the 28 students in the class, and just teach them while completely ignoring the rest of us. She'd pass out a worksheet, then go to her students and never acknowledge us again till she dismissed us. Never checked homework, never acknowledged us. If anyone outside of her favorite students raised their hand or spoke up, they were ignored, etc. Which went about as well as you expected with a bunch of 14, 15-year-olds. That class was just wild. The kids who actually stayed in the classroom anyway, it was a mess. I'm actually surprised we weren't reported or visited by the teachers on either side of us for how loud we were. After several months with this lady, the vice principal was walking around randomly checking classrooms and walked into our cow show, Algebra 1 class. He lost it, yelled at all of us to sit down and shut up which she also didn't acknowledge. Demanded she leave and sat with us the rest of the period. Never saw her again and had maybe six, seven different subs after her. Two weeks after this, our regular teacher came back. When she realized we had learned nothing and learned the extent of how useless this lady had been, she started tearing up. I passed the classroom on the way to the bathroom during the next period and saw her sobbing at her desk. A friend of my mom's worked at the central office where they assigned or organized the substitute teachers. That lady was permanently taken off the substitute list. Story 7. I caught the flu the week my students had a district benchmark test. I could feel that I was coming down with something, so I stayed late to put together really in-depth review packets and slideshows. I wrote pages of directions for the substitute and separated the reviews out by class numbers. I even included my personal number and told them to call me anytime if a student had a question they couldn't answer. I spent about five hours putting everything together after school while battling around a 103 temp. The substitute completely ignored my instructions. She instead took every single piece of construction paper and cardstock in my classroom from my personal locker that I had left open for her in case she needed something and had the students make flip books about their feelings. They used thousands of pieces of paper and craft supplies, probably around $100 of my own personal supplies. This was for freshmen in high school. I'm still bitter. Story 8. A few of the periods I taught were co-teach classes where a percentage of the students in the class have special needs but can work well enough in a general population classroom with assistance from a special education co-instructor. These classes were often very rewarding to teach, but one downside of teaching that population from a logistical standpoint is that I was often required to attend ARD meetings. Basically, every special education student has a meeting about twice a year, sometimes more frequently depending on need, where administrators, teachers, counselors, parents, guardians, and the student themselves all get together to go over their status and review the various educational accommodations the student is receiving to determine what may or may not need to change to best suit their needs. I didn't have a problem with attending these meetings per se, but because they only take approximately one period and several teachers are rotating through various meetings over the course of a day, 
The school had devoted ARD subs, who were more akin to babysitters, at best, than substitute educators. That means that during that one period, hell can randomly break loose. One year, I had a tough student who had some serious attitude problems, but was a good person underneath it all, and with whom I'd done a lot of work with to improve her engagement and interest in my class. About halfway through the year, I got called for an ARD meeting during the period I had said student. In my absence of approximately 45 minutes, the sub decided to pick a petty argument with my kid who was rightfully offended but unwisely overreacted and escalated things to making threats and nearly coming to blows with the sub to where she ended up with in-school suspension for a while. Getting the story from all parties and witnesses involved later, it's pretty clear the sub was to blame. And the kid who I'd worked so hard with was back at square one. I eventually got her back on track, and she ended up with one of the highest grades in my class at the end of the year. But I could only imagine how much better she could have been without the setback and the amount of trust in adults she'd lost. Story 9. This happened to my colleague, but I was the classroom next door. My colleague was showing Clash of the Titans at the end of the year after a unit on ancient Greece. There is mild nudity at the beginning and the end of the movie, but they were in the middle of the movie, so there shouldn't have been an issue. He left the video paused at the right spot. We still had VCRs like 10 years ago when this happened. But the sub somehow managed to show both the nudity at the beginning asterisk and asterisk the end of the movie. The nudity scenes were hours apart and the class was only 40 minutes. Then the sub wrote an email to the principal about how my colleague made him show nudity. Story 10. I came back after being gone one day and my students told me the substitute teacher flipped over tables in a rage and was escorted from the building by a cop. What actually happened is that the sub left the room to take a 20 minutes phone call and the kids thought it would be funny to flip the tables over. The substitute then had to flip the tables right side up while yelling at the kids. Then during lunch, my special ed, co-teacher came into my room to set up and caught the sub making out with a student. Turns out she was 18 to his 25, and the 20 minutes phone call was to set up the lunch meeting. The principal then had him escorted from the building by the resource officer. This is why I say having a sub is more work than just coming into school my own self. Edit, wrong version of principal. Story 11. Not a teacher, but I participate in STEM programs a lot. In the 90s, I belonged to a club that refurbished old industrial PCs and donated them to schools. Sometimes we'd get completely burned out motherboards or disk drives, so I took a bunch of those and made displays showing the insides of computers, and I'd let the kids explore them as part of my session. Then I'd dig out a couple of blown PCs and monitors, hand out the screwdrivers and let them rip them apart. Yes, I was always careful around the old tube monitors. Once they were done, I'd let them pick apart if they wanted to take home. The younger kids especially loved this, and frequently I'd see some kids take home a hard drive controller or a graphics card like it was a real treasure. I even made the local news with my program. That's the thing about living in a small city. Eventually, everyone makes the news. So one day, I went in to do my lesson at a high school. I think freshman or sophomore science class. The class had a substitute, and I had an APT right after that session, so I told them I'd come back to pick everything up the next day. The kids could take whatever they wanted from the old PCs, but please put my displays aside in the cupboard. Next day, I came by, and all my displays were still out, and they were completely trashed. Worse yet, the sub's attitude was, well... Kids will be kids. That was the last session I did ever for that program. Story 12. My ninth grade English teacher was fired, which is an entire other story, and the school had difficulty finding someone to fill the spot. We would have random subs, but they didn't really teach us, so eventually we had a different person babysit us each day or week. One time it was the very scary principal who just glared at us like we were convicts about to escape. The school's police officers who at least talked to us, and various teachers for one-day stints. I don't know why one of our five librarians couldn't have been in there going through great appropriate books at the least. We spent two, three months like that. Story 13. Not a teacher, but the sub made the handicapped classmate who has muscle, joint, and vision complications go grab his textbook from his homeroom. He's not completely helpless, but when it comes to heavy things, he needs help. Classmate's homeroom was halfway across campus, and the required book consists of five large text volumes because they're specifically made for his poor vision. He can't wear glasses either due to complications. I offered to help because I'm usually the one that goes and grabs it for him during normal class, but the sub yelled at me saying, he knows my kind and I'm just trying to get out of class. Sub told me he's not there to play games and for me to quit it before he sends me off to the principal's office. Needless to say, the entire class was shocked. Classmate came back with another student from the homeroom requesting that next time the sub send someone else to grab the books because my classmate can't carry it by himself. When my usual teacher came back, we requested the sub not return because of what he said to us and did to classmate. My teacher wrote an email to the principal about it, and that was the end of that. Story 14. Not a teacher, but a student with a story nonetheless. Meet Mrs. Hostess, fake name Abby. Every time my 8th grade history teacher was out, Mrs. 
Hostess would usually sub for him, not sure why, because she subbed other classes too, but all the incidents of note happened when she subbed for history. One, there happened to be a girl in the class who shared a name with an Irish folk song, Every Time Misses. Hostess took attendance. When she got to Folk Song Girl, she sang asterisk the whole song. Every. Time. Two. The history teacher kept candy and snacks in his desk. Lollipops that he'd hand out for correct answers or just because. Some leftover Halloween candy. And asterisk the Twinkie. The Twinkie was not an ordinary Twinkie. The Twinkie was an experiment in processed food. This Twinkie was still in its original individual packaging and looked normal at first glance, but was actually three years past expiration and asterisk rock solid. The history teacher demonstrated this by standing on the Twinkie during one of the first weeks of classes. All said to say, this is a thoroughly inedible Twinkie, so Mrs. Hostess subbed again, and we knew she'd discovered the lollipop stash because she was openly eating them during class. But it wasn't until the next day that our history teacher opened his desk drawer to find that the Twinkie was asterisk gone. This woman ate an expired, solid Twinkie asterisk, as well as literally all the food candy in the teacher's desk. Story 15. Accused a student of stealing something that the aide had put away. This was a class that contained some pretty rough students, including one suspended multiple times for fighting and some gang members. She decided to go after a sweet, petite girl that never caused trouble and was generally popular with her classmates. This set off the entire class, which is when the sub went ballistic and started wildly throwing accusations and yelling at said students. Security eventually got called and took several students out. My first clue was when the sub got my cell number from the staff directory and went off for 20 plus minutes about how bad my students had been. This was followed up with an extremely long email and a two-page written note on my desk, plus a concerned note from the administrator about not having appropriate sub plans. She didn't follow them in the first place and decided to throw me under the bus. The next morning when I arrived at school, the students were waiting for me at the door. Once I got them calmed down enough to tell their side of the story, we had a discussion on how they could have handled the situation differently. I promised them never to get that sub again. On a related note, I had a good relationship with said rough children because I treated them with respect and fairness. They usually behave for me. Story 16. One. Asked a deaf kid to take off his hearing aids. Kids tried to tell her he needs to them, but to her, they look like headphones. She cried when was confronted by another teacher. Two. When I was in sixth grade, I fractured my wrist, but it was my dominant hand, so I had to poorly write with my right. Teacher forced me to write with my left while I had a cast. I couldn't even grasp the pencil, cried a lot. Then a couple months go by and got my cast off. Sub told me to suck it up and write with my left hours after getting my cast off. I felt like jelly and intense pain. Teacher was fired at the end of seventh grade because of unnecessary complaints. Edit, I should have realized this was a teacher's question, not a student cue. This is considered my first post that I really thought wouldn't get noticed, and now my inbox is full of messages. To clear some questions, I would never steal someone's story, and both stories are very true, but probably be something similar you have encountered before. Also, the teachers should know how to treat students in any situation whatsoever. If teachers really hate their jobs, don't include kids into it. I remember crying asking my mom, why does my teacher pick on me or make me do things I couldn't do? Story 17. Had a substitute teacher in my French high school class who showed a movie that was straight up obscene photos, but tried to explain that because it was in French, it was fiction. It was equally frustrating because while I wanted to see balls, I also couldn't stop reading the subtitles because I had to understand what they were saying. The teacher did not come back the next day. Update. I went through all the comments and looked at everyone who suggested what movie it might be, and none of those movies were the ones shown. This would have been in 2006, and the movie looked maybe late 90s or early 2000s. If I come across it, I will update this thread, but for all I know, it could have been an orange site in French. Story 18. Lost more than half of my textbooks that I purchased myself, as well as textbooks that were school property. Administration just shrugged at this, until they found out the textbooks belonging to the school were around $120 each. Also, lost all the book assignments of four classes I asked him to collect so I could correct those at home. Kind of sucked for the students who did put a lot of work on it and didn't have digital copies. Also didn't teach anything that I asked him to because he didn't really like the subject matter. Also didn't bother grading. When I checked the grades he had given out, there was only one grade, and everyone was given eight-tenths, even students that didn't take my class. Story 19. I had to go out for surgery early 2019. I arranged for my predecessor, who I worked with for a long time in a different classroom, to take over for six weeks. I wrote meticulous lesson plans with song lists and everything, and we had several meetings beforehand. First week, my daughter, I teach in a small district, I teach both of my kids, comes home and is singing Flipping Baby Beluga in the Shower, my sub's favorite song to teach, a song not anywhere on my list. Apparently, my entire lesson was scrapped, and she spent the whole class teaching this song. So the worst thing that a friend of mine did was to teach my kid a song she tortured me with for weeks. 
I found out later she didn't follow any of my lesson plans, which is a pretty common thing, no matter what one teaches. Yes, she is still my friend. No, I do not request her as a sub anymore. Story 20. Not a teacher was a student. We had a quest. Our freshman geometry teacher's cute way of saying it was between the point value of a quiz and a test. The sub came in and saw the instructions and handed out the papers and instructed us to get started. Shortly after, he asked why no one was talking. We explained that it was a quiz test, we needed to work on it alone, and talking would be cheating. He insisted that it was a quest, a collaborative venture to seek knowledge. We tried multiple times to get the point across until he made it clear that if we didn't group desks together and collaborate, we would be in trouble. We had to explain to our teacher what happened when she got back. She made us retake that cow and I never saw him sub anything else in our district again. Story 21. Not a teacher, but in elementary school I had a bloody nose during class and asked to use the restroom. She said no and refused to let me go to the restroom. I think she didn't believe me. I sat there until the blood had spilled all over the desk, then raised my bloody hand to be excused, and only then did she allow me to go clean myself up. She even had the audacity to ask me why I didn't ask to be excused earlier, which was a complete lie, as she definitely heard me the first time, and even the other students pointed out that my nose was bleeding. When the teacher returned, she was livid about what happened. I believe she complained to the administration to make sure the sub was never hired again. Story 22. Not a teacher, but in the fourth grade, our teacher had a baby and was gone for several weeks. The sub we had was an absolute witch. She had no patience for kids. She'd yell at us for stupid cow, ask us questions, and or give us homework that was way above our tiny fourth grade brain levels, and then complain and call us stupid when literally none of the kids did well on the work. One girl decided to get smart with her one day, and she walks over and slaps the girl, hard across the face, which of course sends the girl into a hysterical sobbing fit and says, that's what your worker of a mother should be doing more often, being tiny, adorable fourth graders. We were all too afraid to tell anyone. We had to deal with that for three weeks until the main teacher came back. Story 23. I had a substitute when I worked in a rough school. I knew it was going to be a challenge for the substitute, so I prepared ahead of time with a lot of candy from Costco and notes to not leave their lunch in the fridge. It would have been stolen. The substitute gave out all of my five-pound bag of candy and my calcium chews. When I came back from the field trip, the kids were in a soft lockdown because the school was being searched for sweets. I immediately noticed my calcium chews, chocolate flavored, were gone. I assumed there would be some serious health repercussions, so I frantically searched for a warning label. It said something along the lines of, excess consumption may cause to act as a laxative. One of my hungrier kids had eaten 15 plus chews. The nurse had to round up each of my classes and, with the sub, escort them to the bathroom. The kids never took candy from another substitute of mine ever again. Edit. Typo. Story 24. Had a sub who somehow allowed a last period class of freshmen to convince him that they were not supposed to be working on the packet that I left for the class, and which every other class that day had been working on, because they had already finished it and told him they were supposed to be watching a movie. He went to the library to get the movie, leaving the class unattended, which promptly then broke out a dance party involving dancing on the desks. My department chair's classroom was next door. But as she taught AP government to seniors, she was able to leave them to come next door and try to figure out what the hell was going on. No sub. She calmed the class down and into the seats and into the worksheets and calls the principal, who met the sub on his way back from the library and told him he could go home. My chair also found it would be appropriate to basically call me and blame me for this while I was sick at home. I don't teach anymore, LOL. I mean, packets were not a great emergency sub plan, but what can you do? They could have played Heads Up 7-Up for all I cared, LOL. They were a handful of a group on the best days. Freshmen after lunch during last period of the day are a situation. Story 25. Was a student. Our maths teacher went on leave for a while. I think maternity. And the supply teacher was absolutely useless. He'd been given one topic to teach us, and that was it. For weeks. We had a whole textbook to be working through, and I was gunning to take my maths GCSE a year early. But no. We just did a topic our class had got the hang of in a week for two or three months, because I guess he didn't know or bother to ask what we were supposed to be doing next. So the rest of the year, we had to go ahead of the pace we were expecting to be able to cover everything we had to know. Flipping supply teachers. Story 26. I'm not a teacher, but our substitute teacher gave us a task to write a story about any theme we liked. Fourth grade, age 10, 11. At the moment, I was hooked on everything space-related. The planets, the moon landing, ECT, too young to even remotely understand any of that. But this didn't hinder me to write a story about Apollo 11. I put my back into it and talked my father into typing it on the computer, since I would have taken three days for that one page. Filled with pride, I gave the story to the substitute teacher, and I got it handed back with a line across the paper, stating that I didn't wrote that. No questions or anything, just a, 
You didn't do this, I know that. Any form of trying to convince her failed. Albeit that no adult person would write even remotely amateurish like I did. Story 27. Way before most of you were born, dot 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 IT, quote S. May 1981. I have a bad cold. I'm moving from an apartment to our first house. And my wife is due to give birth to our first child at any time. It's a Thursday. I write lesson plans for Friday and Monday. Remember, these are the days before cell phones or email. The plans are left on the front table of my classroom. Friday and Saturday are moving days. The new house is filled with boxes. We can't find anything. Sunday morning, my wife goes into labor. By Sunday night, our beautiful baby is born. Since I had left plans for Friday and Monday and informed the office I would let them know Monday of my plans for Tuesday, I wasn't worried about my classes. But on Monday morning, the phone rang in my wife's recovery room. It was the principal telling me the sub had bailed because whoever had subbed on Friday had thrown out the lesson plans, not realizing they were to be continued on Monday. The Monday sub, probably rightly, refused to work without plans. I didn't know the sub on Friday wasn't going to stick around for Monday. Again, with no email option, I couldn't just send new ones. The principal demanded that I return to school. The school was in a rural small community about 25 miles from the city where we lived and where the hospital was located. He wouldn't hear of me just telling him what the plans were to be. He demanded again that I drop everything and get down to school, which I did. Someone else later that day picked up my wife and son and drove them home to our house full of boxes, so I didn't get to have that experience. The principal called me into his office and lectured me. He said, my wife had balls cancer surgery, you know what I did? I dropped her off at the hospital door and came to school because that is my job. I expect nothing less from you. Needless to say, we never really got along after that. I'm thankful that he retired a few years after that. And I went on to teach until 2008 and had a very good career. But it would have been much better if that substitute teacher had not thrown out my lesson plans that Friday afternoon. Story 28. Not a teacher, but in seventh grade life science, we had a sub. For the first five or so minutes of class, he made us do a Kahoot. For anyone who doesn't know, Kahoot is a learning website that lets you take a quiz in a fun way. The only problem was that he told us every answer. Next, we were supposed to be learning about parts of a microscope, but instead he got them out and told us to mess around with them, and he broke one of them. After that, he put a video up and ate my teacher's chocolate, then fell asleep for the last half hour or so of class. Needless to say, when our teacher got back and we told her about the sub, he was fired. Story 29, student, not the teacher. In fourth grade, the language arts teacher was out for a day. We're admittedly a little rowdy, as you are when you have a sub, but we weren't exactly being terrible, just doing what we're assigned and being louder than normal. He didn't exactly tell us to, he quiet. Dude yells at us that we're the crappiest kids he's ever worked with. Told the teacher the next day after she asked how the sub was. Same class, we had another sub a different day. He just sat at her desk and did nothing all day. I think he was playing with her desk toys too. Just gave us some worksheets and did nothing. We also told the teacher about this guy. Story 30. Not a teacher, obviously. One time my regular gym teacher had to go on leave for a few weeks due to family issues. So she was replaced with a substitute. Turns out that sub was the ex-wife of my mom's recently separated boyfriend. My mom broke up with the boyfriend only a few weeks before this happened. During their time together, the ex-wife made the relationship hell by verbally attacking him and my family. Basically, and I hate him so I will make everyone's life hell type thing. It got really serious when she started to claim that I was bullying her son when it was the opposite. This was also the period in middle school where we had to sit through the close relationship ed class. So, of course, she took on the role of teaching that. She spent the entire time during both P.E. and close relationship ed belittling me and making fun of my weight. Anytime we covered the negatives of puberty like pimples and voice cracks, she would often target me as an example. Nobody liked her, especially once I told everyone who she actually was. Things ended when I convinced my mom to send the school all of the horrible messages, emails, and texts she had sent our way, including some very harsh Facebook posts. They replaced her, and she was barred from substituting at any school in the district. Found out a few years later that she actually lost custody of her kids my former step-siblings, I guess, because she'd tried to move out of state repeatedly without notifying the father and the govt. A sad turn of events, but her kids were already in high school by then and pieces of cow themselves, so whatever. Story 31. I had a day off for a medical appointment and left very detailed lesson plans for the supply teacher. One thing that I made sure to print in asterisk, asterisk, bold asterisk, asterisk lettering was that the EKO provincial testing was coming up and I wanted her to go over one specific math concept to refresh their memory. I wrote out exactly how the lesson was to be taught, provided the questions in full, made sure my I's were dotted and my T's were crossed. I came back the next day to no note from the supply teacher and my math bulletin board covered with turkeys. Turkeys made by tracing your handprint and cutting them out and decorating them. So when the students arrived, I asked how the math lesson went and they said she didn't do any math. She didn't want to do math. So she asked, the laziest kid in the class, what he wanted to do instead of math. And he said, make hand turkeys. So... 
that's what we did. I spent the next two days sacrificing science and social studies lessons so that we could go over the math concept she didn't cover. Told the principal I didn't want her in my class anymore. But then she got a day to cover my wife's classroom. My wife, who is the French teacher, plays a game in the class called Bonbon, where if you are able to answer a number of questions in French, you win a candy. This supply teacher decided to empty my wife's brand new container of candy, which had over 100 huge pieces of candy inside, and give them out to the students without playing the game at all. Just handed it out like it was Halloween. No note explaining what she did and an empty container that my wife paid for out of her own pocket. My wife told the principal she didn't want her in her class anymore. After that, she made one more appearance at the school, this time in the kindergarten room. I don't know what she did, but the kindergarten teacher went to the principal, and I'm guessing you can figure out the rest from there. Story 32. Not a teacher, but my AP English teacher last year got super mad about a sub we had. She left lesson plans on her desk for him that morning, BC. She was out sick. He showed up and I knew it was going to be fun, BC. He'd been my long-term sub in another class, BC. The teacher's wife passed away and he sucked. He told us we just didn't have to do the warm-up and then have us papers we weren't supposed to get until several weeks later and then gave us one assignment that didn't make any sense to us and everyone could tell wasn't an actual assignment. This was an AP class, so of course we ended up pretty behind from that one day of doing nothing and our teacher was pissed about it because she'd had all the correct stuff on her desk and he claimed to not be able to find it. Edit just for fun. When this dude was our long-term sub in another class, he'd talk about his wife a lot and in a way where it seemed like he was sort of trying to be funny. But we were concerned because he'd be like, my wife is doing this annoying thing. What do you think, guys? Should I beat her up? Story 33, special education teacher here. The last sub I had was when I was out sick about a year ago with a really nasty sinus infection. This sub left my students unattended and alone in the class multiple times so she could use the bathroom down the hall. We have a bathroom in the classroom, but she apparently could not figure that out. I tried to force my ID student, who is dyslexic to read and would not leave him alone the entire day. He cannot read, and his IEP specifically says that information must be presented orally and that he be allowed to dictate answers. One of my students has vision issues and did not have his glasses on that day. She was convinced he was blind. She then asked him if he lived in a gated community or a nice house. And when he said yes, she said, well, you should be able to afford some glasses then. Completely ignored my lesson plans and did her own thing. Also ignored my instructions that my aide was in charge and that she, the sub, should follow my aide's directions. Constantly berated my students for their behavior, tried to force them to do busy work, and then decided to ignore them and focus on the ID student all day. My students were so upset, and my aide was so angry that I left my doctor appointment and went to the school to stay with them for the last hour of the day. My students begged me to never leave them with a sub again. Not my choice. It was the school's call. She has since been barred from ever subbing again after I told my principal what had happened. Story 34. I've been a teacher for 16 years. I was gone presenting at a conference for three days. Had the same sub assigned to my room all three days. Great. I teach students with special needs, and it's hard to get a consistent sub, even though my kiddos are awesome. On day one, I get frantic text messages from my para, who was female, that the sub is not following any of my lesson plans, not following any behavior plans, and generally doing whatever he wants. My para tried to intervene, but was ignored. I emailed the school and asked Theme to give the sub new plans. Watch a movie. Easy, right? Nope. Again, wouldn't listen to my para who was trying to help set up the movie. Movie eventually gets running and a phone rings in the movie. My sub answers my school phone. No one there. Phone rings again. Sub answers my phone again. He becomes very concerned that the phone is ringing, but no one is there. My para and students try to explain to him it was in the movie. He wasn't buying it. Eventually, I came back to school and gave all of my students cupcakes for being so well-behaved and understating. I met the sub as he was in another classroom. Guy was at least 90. He got lost going to the bathroom next door to the classroom he was teaching in and was found wandering the floor below. I asked to never have the sub in my room again. He still subs from time to time in the district. Still gets lost, still doesn't follow any lesson plans, and still won't take any advice or direction from females. Story 35. I was the student in this situation. The sub was for my science teacher. Literally everyone hated this sub. He would hit on all the girls, carry around a TV antenna, and threaten to whip us, and would just stare. I have a medical condition that causes daily pain, especially if I'm on my period. All of my teachers knew that if I asked to go to the nurse, it was to get a heating pad and lay down for a bit until the flare-up was over. I got hit with a bad episode in the middle of class. We were not even doing anything important, just watching a Bill Nye video because the sub didn't know any actual lessons. I asked to go to the nurse. When he demanded to know why, I said it was a girl problem and I was in a lot of pain. My classmates knew about my condition and also told him I had to go. He said I was lying. Females make up intense pain stories all the time, just for attention. He refused to let me leave. After a few minutes, I was crying from the pain and begged him to let me leave. 
When he still said no, a classmate helped me out of my chair and just started walking me to the door. Turns out there was a large puddle of blood left in my seat, and I passed out before I got to the door. When I woke up in the nurse's office, I could hear the sub arguing with the nurse how I just faked it for the attention and the blood was obviously not that bad. Yeah, he was banned from the school and all surrounding schools after that. Story 36? Had my students call him daddy, had a SPED meeting, and I was gone for about 20 minutes. He also went through my computer, had to leave it logged in, and projected for my kids to see my lesson. I trained them to read through the agenda and do the tasks if I'm gone. This was before Google Classrooms. He went through my computer, dug through files, found IEPs, and displayed them. My instructions to him were, watch the kids. Make sure they are doing their bell work quietly. Nothing more, nothing less. So I come back, and my cousin, yes, my cousin was my student. I was the only advanced L.A. teacher. We had no choice but to have her in my class. Immediately rats him out. He gets defensive and says she's lying. Told him I doubt that since there is literally nothing for her to gain from it, and I have a great relationship with her. He looked, and me, and said something along the lines of all kids lie, blah, blah, blah. All my kids did the oh sound. One piped up and told the sub he messed up twice. One for the daddy comment. Two for saying my cousin lies. Kid then explained our relationship to the sub. I walked out to the principal's office and let my boss know that. One, the sub is creepy and wants my kids to call him daddy. Two, he is never to be in my classroom or one of my team members. Three, was looking for IEPs and didn't follow my sub plans. Four, that I will be bringing up this issue to the union. Five, insinuated that my cousin is a liar. I'm her emergency contact for school and dealt with all the school stuff for my aunt and uncle since they don't speak English. Boss surprisingly agreed to each point. Sub was moved to the elementary schools, though. That creeped me out. I think it's because we were short on subs. Story 37. I'm a student, but one lesson, one of my classmates pretended to be a teacher. He was really developed, really tall, big beard, and all compared to the rest of us. He was dressed fairly smart, too, and came late, so I see why the teacher believed him. But the teacher let him do our register and settle the class down. So he had his fun with it all, giving the, the majority of the class a detention on our system and writing all our names down on the board, as our normal teacher would. I don't know what that substitute teacher would have said to my teacher, but she wasn't exactly happy when we had her next. Story 38. I had to be gone for three days in a row. I slaved over my sub plans. The kids had AP tests coming up. It was the perfect blend of kids being productive and the sub having a relatively easy time. The sub told my kids the plans were garbage and that I didn't know anything. My kids and I have a good relationship. So that immediately turned the kids off to him. He made sexist comments about how women shouldn't teach about government and politics. He threw my handouts and copies away and lectured my kids instead. His topics were not related to the class at all. He ate all, and I mean all of the snacks that I bought for my lower income kids. Granola bars, nuts, dried fruit, crackers, bananas, bottles of water. He left sticky notes in my lesson plan book about lessons that he thought were bad and made notes about incorrect information. Spoiler alert, my information wasn't incorrect. For instance, he crossed out the numbers for my electoral college map and replaced the numbers with the House of Representatives numbers. He ruined my map. He crossed out my information cards about different forms of government. He replaced the U.S. from a republic with a direct democracy. He sent a bunch of kids to the principal for studying for the AP exam instead of following along with his made-up lecture. They weren't being disrespectful or disruptive. These were the sweetest straight-A type kids. One of the girls cried because she had never been kicked out of class before. The assistant principal came down to see what was going on, and I found all this out because the sub showed my AP my lesson plans as if to show how bad they were. The AP asked where my materials and handouts were, and the sub proudly showed her that he has thrown them away. He denied it later, but I'm fairly certain he stole my colorful grading pens, 12 if them, sticky notes, like five packs of pink and yellow ones, my dragon stapler, and a mug. It was one that one of my students made for me, so I was really hurt about that one. The district did nothing because we are so short on subs. He is still subbing today. I still see him in the building. I do not let him sub for me, but I can't do anything else. Story 39. Not a teacher, but my mom was tempted to terminate a sub. My sister's class was full of entitled bullies who believed they could do whatever the fudge they wanted. Some kids had knocked my sister, six years old at the time, over on the asphalt and began kicking the cow out of her, resulting in her having to go to the nurse. The sub did nothing. My mom confronted the sub, who said she deserved it. My mom used all her willpower that day to not end up in jail. As for me... Those kids are lucky my sister and I had separate recess periods. And to this day, I wish I had beat those brats senseless for the way they treated my sister. Story 40. I had my favorite K-cup coffee set aside for when I really needed it. She drank it and ate my chocolates. The kids were telling me about how she used my coffee cup and everything. I held up the coffee cup and said, this one, they confirmed. The cup had been dirty. They loved that, told the story to another younger teacher. Apparently, she had dealings with the sub outside of school. Teacher said the lady had stolen her pricey travel coffee much. I asked why she didn't do anything. 
Teacher said, I'm scared of that bad person. I talked to the front office. She was removed from the preferred sub list. Story two, another chemistry teacher was out on maternity leave. They got a long-term sub that was a retired PhD in chemistry or something. Instead of following the state-mandated curriculum, he decided to teach his favorite parts of chemistry instead. Story 41, not a teacher, but my art teacher went on leave and the sub proceeded to teach her own curriculum. We had our sketchbook assignments and since we used our sketchbooks for personal drawings as well, we would use sticky notes so the teacher would know which pages to look at. Normally, my art teacher would leave the grade and comments on the back of the page and lightly in pencil. This sub proceeds to go through my entire sketchbook and check marks each page with a drawing with a pen, as if she was grading it. Not on the back of the page, on the side with the drawing. This was 10 years ago and I'm still mad about it.